Hello and welcome to Little Things with Amber L.B. Swenson. Today's topic is called Theory versus Reality. But first, let me tell you a little bit about me. I have been writing and teaching Bible studies for the past 15 years. I've worked with women, youth, Sunday school, books for them. We're going to talk about making plans, and we're going to kind of um, explore this double-sided coin between (laughs) um, being a person who makes plans and has to stick to those plans and can't adjust, or being one of those fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants people who doesn't make any plans at all and irritates a lot of people because they don't plan ahead. And we're going to look at sort of God's um, wisdom on this to see if we can sort of get a grasp on this concept and see how we should really act and live as believers um, to bring glory to God. So um, this topic came about because I heard a pastor's wife who um, lived in a foreign country where the gospel became increasingly hostile. And um, they had received, her and her husband had received word that they should probably think about evacuating. And that's indeed what they started to do. They started packing up and making plans to get out of the country. And just as they were, um, her husband was taken and put in prison. And so they ended up, she stayed there for, I think, three or three and a half years while he was imprisoned. And... um, As she was telling their story, something really hit me. She said they had always planned for this to happen because they knew that it was a possibility. But when they were actually living it, they had no idea how hard it would be. Even though they had mentally planned for it, they had talked about it, they had um, decided how they would do things, um, and, and from her husband's point of view, who the man who was imprisoned, even though he had the word of God and she was able to visit him, um, I think once a week or so, and she brought him letters and she brought him um, hope, it was very, very hard for him to continue to um, not fall into despair when he was so beaten down in the prison. And she said that's something that they couldn't have planned for is how much it would affect him mentally. And that made me really think about so much of life. You know, when you have a baby, that's one thing that um, kind of stood out to me because it's sort of the same thing. You have, you get pregnant and, you know, you go through these birth classes and you make this birth plan and you go into labor and you're starting to have these little contractions and you're so excited and you're heading to the hospital and you're smiling and it's so wonderful. And then labor gets intense and it's not fun and it's not funny. And where's the plan? (laughs) And I didn't know it was going to hurt this bad. I don't care what I said in my plan. Um, You know, and so for the best made plans, you know, it seems like you have to make the plans and um, go through the process of planning, but be willing to adjust when things don't turn out the way that you thought they might. You know, you a lot of times make plans for best case scenario. And best case scenario might be, you know, you're in labor for six hours and then you have a baby. Well, what about when you're in labor for 36 hours? (laughs) What is the scenario then? And what is the plan then? And how do you adjust to that? And um, yeah, so all those things. So first of all, let's just look at scripture and take a look at some of the things that um, Jesus and then 
the other um, writers of the of the um, Bible tell us. So first of all, Jesus told us not to worry about tomorrow. <laughs> he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough to worry about. You know, just worry about today. Just get through today. So in a way, what he was saying was, um, you know, don't spend all your time making these plans that, as we know, a million things can go wrong. And you can spend so much time scheduling and trying to get things just so. And if you think that you have to live with those things being just so, then you're going to be in a constant state of disappointment. Maybe not constant, but you're going to be disappointed often because things happen. You get a flat tire or, um, you know, right now we have two vehicles out. My son's um, blazer went out a while ago and we were, um, we had taken it somewhere to get it fixed and we said, you know, he's a young kid, so just don't get it done in 24 hours. Just take your time doing it. Well, they took two months, a little over two months. (laughs) before they actually got around to getting it done. In the meantime, we had an extra vehicle that used to be my father-in-law's and we were letting him use that and that broke down in the middle of the street. And so now we were down two vehicles and, um, you know, he really was disappointed. My son was disappointed. He's a 17-year-old boy who likes to have his independence. And, you know, I was just trying to tell him, look, these things happen in life. No, They're not things that we could plan for. We, we tried to, um, you know, make it work after the blazer broke. But then when the next truck boat broke, we were sort of out of luck. Then we, we have no more extra vehicles to deal with. So now... You're just going to have to wait and adapt to your situation. Um, James, in the book of James, James was Jesus' half-brother, by the way. They had the same mother, of course, Mary. But James um, was Joseph's son, whereas Jesus was the son of um, God and the Holy Spirit. So um, James was Jesus' half-brother, and his brother, brothers did not believe in Jesus while Jesus was on earth, but after Jesus rose from the dead, um, James became a fervent believer, and he had this to say. He said, now listen you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, We will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin. And that really pretty much echoes Jesus' thought as far as, you know, don't worry about tomorrow. There's so many things about tomorrow that are out of your realm of control. (laughs) So, You know, are you going to be sick? Are you going to have accidents? Is someone, are you going to run out of money? Are you going to lose your job? Are you going to whatever? You can't plan for the circumstances of life that get thrown your way. You certainly can't plan for all of them. Although Dave Ramsey would tell us that we should have an emergency fund so that we can not be totally knocked out and um, not have anything to fall back on when those things do happen. So there's a a sense of planning for the unexpected. <laughs> so, and that leads us to Proverbs 21.5, which says, the plans of the diligent, so those who are hardworking, lead to profit as sure as haste leads to poverty. And that goes back to the Dave Ramsey thing. So if we can plan ahead knowing that the unexpected is going to happen, then we're not totally shaken when it happens. And we can make plans and carry those plans out instead of being hasty and just jumping into something without planning for it and then finding we're not equipped. And that, by the way, is what Jesus said in the book of Luke. He said... Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? I mean, who would just get started building something and then realize halfway through, oh, I don't have the money to do this, and then you'd look like a fool. So it's not that we're not to plan at all. Clearly, that's not 
what Jesus is saying. And that's not what James is saying. What James is saying and what Jesus was saying is we shouldn't be arrogant to know or to think that we know what's coming up ahead of us. And we shouldn't make plans saying, oh, this is what's going to happen here. And I'm going to do this. And when I get done doing this, I'm going to do this. I always kind of think it's funny when people, um, you know, are getting married and they're like, oh, we're going to have three kids. Really? (laughs) There's so much you don't know. You don't know if you can have kids. You don't know if you're going to enjoy having kids. Um, There's just so many things that you don't understand before you have kids. So that's kind of, it's not arrogant. It's more ignorant for people to say that without really knowing what they're getting into. Um, you know, so many of the things that we do, I think it's important that we do plan. And then we also plan for <laughs> things to not go as we plan. So when I'm teaching Bible studies, I certainly plan I I do research and I read commentaries and I study the word and I get passages that talk about um, these things. But if it doesn't go the way I think it's going to go, if um, the people that I'm teaching take it in a different direction, I just go with it. Um, Because I figure we've prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to be there and, and let's just go with it. You know, before Christmas, I was teaching the teen Bible study and so Um, we're doing a series that I'm calling That's in the Bible. And so we're doing a lot of the accounts in the Bible that they have never heard because they're not the David and Goliath accounts. They're um, the accounts of David when he's running from Saul and he stops to get bread from a priest and then he gets Goliath's sword and then Saul comes and kills the priest and all the men with him. So they're the things that um, the teens who, you know, are in high school now are going, wait, I've never heard that before. And so um, the week before Christmas, we did this Bible study on Christmas. I said, I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things you might not know about the Christmas account. So I talked about how far Nazareth was from Bethlehem and how steep the climb was the last 16 miles and Um, how the wise men weren't there at the same time as the shepherds, even though the nativities that we put up a lot of times do that. And um, I I think we were maybe 10 minutes into this hour-long Bible study. And one of the kids said, well, so where was Jesus before he was a baby? And I said, oh, we see him all throughout the Old Testament when you read the angel of the Lord. Um, that was Jesus prior to becoming a human. And they were floored. They never knew that. They were like, what are you talking about? So we started paging through the Old Testament and finding the places where the angel of the Lord came and appeared. And I talked to him about creation and how the Trinity is there. And, you know, it was um, afterwards I had more than one of the kids say that was the best Bible study we have ever had. I learned more today than I have known in the 14, 15, 16 years of my life. So again, you make a plan and you research that plan, but then you go where the Holy Spirit leads you and um, you let him lead and guide the discussion and go from there. I have some great quotes on this. Um, Dwight D. Eisenhower said, In preparing for battle... I have always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. I think that sums so much up because planning is the process of working it all out in your mind. So it's preparing for what is to come, but the actual plans may or may not come to fruition. That doesn't negate all that you just learned in the planning process. You learn a ton through planning. That's where, you know, you really get down to why are we doing this and what are, what are we really after and how are we going to accomplish this? But when you get into the heat of battle, everything changes. So Eisenhower said, you know, plans are fairly useless, but planning, man, that's indispensable. And I think that is so right on the, I mean, that is right on the money. 
that's exactly what we need to do. We need to be planning in life. I think it's so important to make plans with your kids in terms of if you come across this situation, you know, when they were younger, I used to tell my kids, if someone tries to take you or if someone, you know, comes up to you and approaches you and they have the puppy in or, or whatever, you know, and so we, we gave them all these scenarios that we work through. Now, is that to say that they're ever going to be in that exact scenario? No. It is to say that you get them thinking about what should I do? How should I respond? Where should I go if I'm in this situation? And that, like Eisenhower said, is indispensable to have those conversations. What if you're at a party and everybody else is drinking? What's your out? You just need to send me a text with one word on it. And I will call you and I'll say, it's really important you get home right now because such and such has happened. And that's your out. So the whole process of planning is really important. Will it work out exactly that way? No, maybe not. Maybe it will be totally a different scenario. But at least we've talked through it and we've worked through it. And you're prepared in some way to face what is to come. Eleanor Roosevelt, we're kind of on a presidential theme, um, said this, it takes as much energy to wish as it does to plan. And I think that this is crucial. I come across people all the time who tell me they want to write. They will say, oh man, I want to write a book so bad and I've thought about it and I have, you know, the whole plot lined out and whatever. And I will say the same thing to every one of them. Sit down and write. Just do one chapter. So if you have the whole thing thought out in your head, put down one chapter. Write out an outline, write it out, get it done. Um, Wishing or wanting to do it only goes so far. You can do that forever. Um, At some point, you actually have to plan and then get busy. Back to those um, diligent hands that it said in the book of Proverbs. You know, you actually have to do the work. (laughs) You got to quit talking and start working. And then um, Warren Buffett said this, Someone's sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. And I think that's so important for all of us. All the things that we do... um, as parents, especially I'm thinking right now, as parents, we plant a ton of seeds. We're constantly planting seeds. We're talking to our kids about the Lord. We're doing devotions with them. We're saying prayers with them. We're teaching them to be grateful to God for anything that comes their way. In crisis situations, we're teaching them to turn to God. And all these are seeds. And As our kids grow up, they have to own their faith and they have to take those seeds and do something with them because they're not going to be living in our house forever. So they actually have to start doing the prayers on their own and start searching through the Bible on their own and getting a community of believers that will hold them accountable and push them forward into godliness and righteousness. And, you know, sometimes it works out. If you've been a teacher at all, (laughs) you plant a lot of seeds. And some of those people, as soon as they're confirmed or um, at college, they run so far from the Lord. And it can feel like all those seeds were wasted or all those hours were wasted. But the prayer is that that's not the case and that somewhere down the line, those seeds will start to sprout again. That will start to make sense and they'll go back to that and they'll remember what they were taught and why they were taught that. And um, who knows the fruit it will bear down the line. So to wrap it up, I think the bottom line is that planning is an important part of life. I think we need to um, not just fly by the seat of our pants. I don't think I've ever, no, I know I have not ever tried to teach a Bible study without preparing. I can't imagine going into, and now I have 15, 16 years experience behind me of teaching Bible studies between women's Bible studies and 
Sunday school and youth group and teen Bible study and um, teaching Bible history. I have years of experience, but that doesn't matter. I still go back and prepare before each lesson and refresh what I already know. And um, I think that planning is really, really important. But like I said, not getting so bogged down by a schedule that you're totally... um, you know, left helpless if it doesn't go according to plan. Some of the best Bible studies I've ever been a part of have gotten off topic and we've gone down a rabbit hole. Um, But there's also a lot of times that we've started down a rabbit hole when I'm in a Bible study, when I'm leading a Bible study. And I've said, guys, we got to get back to what we're doing because this is what we're here to learn. And um, that rabbit hole may or may not be fruitful for us to go down (laughs) if it's one of complaining or one of, you know, someone just trying to waste time because they don't want to focus on what we're there to focus on, then that's, that's not useful and that's not edifying for the group. Um, so I think, I think that's where the discernment comes in. And I think, you know, like I said, Dave Ramsey would tell us to plan for the unexpected. I think that's where a lot of peace comes in is, um, is doing that. So when you plan for the unexpected and you have that emergency fund, when the washer and the dryer go out in the in the same month, which mine did, you know, you're left kind of going, wow, there goes the emergency fund. But thank God we had the emergency fund because otherwise we'd be in a pickle right now. So, um, you know, I think that's the most godly way to approach it is to make our plans, to pray about our plans, um, to ask the Lord if those plans are not in will, uh, in step with his will. And if they aren't, then, you know, he's got to, he's got to move us in the right direction. He's got to get us back where we're supposed to be. But in the meantime, just, um, also not being arrogant enough to assume that just because we make a plan, that's how it's going to turn out. It may or may not turn out that way. And you know what? It's not the end of the world if it doesn't. Um, Things happen, and that's in accordance to God's will. You know, I just, um, the last Christmas we had, I had to cancel Christmas at my house because three of my uh, family members came down with the influenza. There was nothing I could do about it. I mean, we had had everybody ask off work. We had it so that everybody could be here on the same day, and then people are sick. All I could do was cancel Christmas. Now... Was Christmas actually canceled? <laughs> no, not the not the true celebration that takes place in our heart. We still celebrated Christ's birth, and um, we just had to move our family celebration to a different day. And you know what? That day didn't work for everybody, and that was the best we could do because it worked for the majority, and that's all we had at the time. So, you know, we plan, we adjust, we go with what we have. And I think that's the best that we can do. So let me know if you have some thoughts on this. I would love to hear um, your experience. And if you think there's more to it than what I've told you. Otherwise, I think that's the best I can do. This has been Little Things. Because in God's kingdom, the little things are the big things. Please remember to pray for us at Time of Grace. We certainly covet your prayers as we try to minister to Christians here in the United States and across the globe. And we also really need your financial donations so that we can share this message and others like it with many more people. 